Hi, I'm math professor Timothy Pennings and I'm going to uh, give a series of lectures entitled The Essentials of Calculus. We're going to begin with this one which will be an introduction to uh, calculus. I once heard the uh, anecdote that uh, Bertrand Russell, a great mathematician, uh, said he once met uh, Winston Churchill at some sort of a social gathering and Churchill asked uh, Russell to explain calculus to him in two words or less which Bertrand Russell said I did to his satisfaction. It would be interesting to know what that conversation was about. Anyway, I'll take a little bit longer to give the uh, over, overview of calculus in this uh, lecture, and then we will dive into the topic right after that. So, to begin with, uh, let's begin with lines. Suppose we have a line, uh, here's one, y is equal to uh, 3x, plus 1. So there's a line with slope 1, uh, slope 3, and y-intercept 1. To have slope 3 means that if I begin at any point on the line and move to any other point, that if you take this change right here, sometimes called delta y, and this change right here, sometimes called delta x, then the ratio of delta y over delta x is called the slope, which in this case would be 3, which means for every unit you move to the right, you move up 3 units, so a 3 to 1 ratio. So uh, that's lines, and we will uh, talk about lines more in the next lecture or so. But uh, just as an introduction, I'm going to assume that you're familiar with that. And now we're going to ask, okay, that's fine for lines, but what happens if we have a curve which is not a line? How do we go about asking and getting the slope of it. So here is maybe the easiest nonlinear curve, parabola, y equals x squared. And suppose I take a particular point, let's say x equals 3, and so this would be the point 3, 9 right here, and I ask the question, what's the slope of that parabola at the point 3. Well, we first have to even define what we mean. There, there's, uh, unlike a line, there's, you just can't take two points and take the uh, difference between them. What you do here is you think, well, what happens if we have ourselves some sort of a, a ruler or a, a, a line that touches the curve just at that one point? What would the slope of that curve be that is tangent to it, touches it right there? Another way to think about it is if you have a, a car that's going along this road and the car happens to be at this point and the headlights are, are going straight ahead of it, then what would be the line that the headlights would take as it extends on along the road? So that's what we're after. So by the slope of the, of the curve at that point, that's what we mean. Well, that's fine. That, that tells us what we're after, but it doesn't help us to get it. In order to get it, what we're going to do is we're going to take another point just a little bit away from it, and uh, let's, let's say that this point is the point uh, x, x squared, so there's a point on the graph, x, x squared, and then we're going to draw the line segment that goes between these two points. So the, the slope of this line segment here would be the change in the y values x squared minus 9, because this height is x squared and this height is 9, divided by the change in the, um, I'm sorry, that was a change in the y values, x squared and 9, divided by the change in the x values, this value is x and this value is 3. And then we ask the question, what's going to happen to the slope of this line right here as x gets closer and closer and closer to 3. Because you can kind of see that as x gets closer to 3, I'm going to be getting, a, it's called a secant line, which is going to be closer and closer to the, the slope of this tangent line right there. And so and th this is all by way of just an introduction, so don't worry about it yet. I'm just kind of showing you what, what calculus is all about. So then we say, well, what happens as you let x get closer and closer and closer to 3, we say take the limit as x approaches 3, and
And that's what we're after. And that will give us the slope of this parabola at the point 39. And so to evaluate this limit, we say, well, let's see now. This is equal to x squared minus 9. That can be written as x plus 3 times x minus 3. And then the bottom is still x minus 3. And then we see that this can divide out with this. And now as x gets closer and closer to 3, that keeps getting closer to 3. This is a 3. 3 plus 3 is going to be 6. So in other words, what we've just shown very briefly, and as I say, this is just an introduction, is going to, that, that, is, that is then the, the slope of this tangent line at the point 3, 9. The slope of that tangent line is 6. And so it's rather remarkable. I remember when I first saw that whole technique, I just got shivers up my spine, thinking, wow, what a clever idea. So that's one thing that calculus is all about. And as I say, that's, this is totally an introduction. Don't worry if you're not following everything exactly. I just want you to have a general sense of where we're going to be going. The other main idea is, let's take the, let's take um, another simple example. If I have a curve like this, and I want to find the area underneath that curve, then I can just basically break it up into these rectangles and find the area under each of these rectangles. And if I add them together, I've got the area underneath the curve. No problem at all. On the other hand, let's go back to our let's go back to our parabola. If we have a parabola and I ask the question, what's the area underneath this parabola from, let's say, from 0 to 3 again? How would I go about finding the area underneath that thing? If I wanted to seed this or if I wanted to tile it and I wanted to figure out how much seed or tile I needed, how would I go about finding that area? Well, one thing you could do is you could break it up into a whole bunch of little rectangles and then you could find the area of each one of these rectangles. Which you can do. And then we could say, well, the area underneath those rectangles looks like at least it's a rough approximation for the area underneath the curve. It's obviously going to be a, an over approximation, but at least it's close. And then you say, well, how can we get a better approximation? Well, if you take smaller and smaller rectangles so that this goes like this and then this goes like this and you get rid of this part and you get rid of this part and this comes right up here and this goes right there Now you've got a better approximation. And you can see that as you take smaller and smaller rectangles, you're going to get a better and better approximation for the area underneath that parabola. That is the second main question that calculus allows us to solve. It's those two things. It's finding the slope of a curve and finding the area underneath the curve. That's all we're going to be doing in this course, and that's really all that calculus is all about. And it turns out that those two problems help you solve all sorts of problems in real life. Just one example, um, I have a dog. I had a dog by the name of Elvis, and Elvis used to like to, when I would go to the beach, I'd throw a ball out into the water. Here's Elvis right here. And he would run along the beach a ways, and then jump in and go after the ball. And I realized that he was trying to get to the ball as quickly as possible, and so what I did, and again, this is something we're going to be doing later on, but I discovered that Elvis basically had to make a choice of what he wanted this distance to be before the corner. Here's the corner, and he had to choose at what point should he jump in for the ball before he got to the corner. And if this is the choice of Y, 
and this is the total amount of time it took Elvis to get to the ball, it turns out that here's what the graph looked like. It looks something like that. If y is equal to zero, which means he goes all the way to this corner, then it takes this amount of time for him to get to the ball. If instead of going all the way to the corner, if he jumps in a little bit ahead of that, so that y is some positive quantity, then it takes him less time to get to the ball. But if he jumps in too soon, now he's spending too much time swimming, and it's going to take more time to get to the ball. And so the graph looks something like this, and we wanted, and I wanted to find out what choice of y would minimize the amount of time it took him to get to the ball. And so I'm looking for where this graph here takes a minimum value. And the point where it takes a minimum value, notice that the slope of the graph right there, the slope is zero. And quite often, in any sort of an application, you're interested in either where the, 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 the cost is a minimum, or you might be where the profit is a maximum, and you want to find out where the slope is zero because that's going to give you the, either the maximum value or the minimum value. So there's all sorts of places in applications where we kind of want to know um, the, the slope of a function or, as it turns out, the area underneath a function. So a diagram that explains what we're going to be doing in this course Almost all of mathematics is based on the idea of functions. And so we're going to begin, after a quick review of algebra, we're going to begin with the understanding what functions are. And uh, then, that's almost all of mathematics uses functions as, their, as its uh, foundation. And then calculus starts where we use this idea of limits, which I mentioned already. As soon as you get this idea of limits, that's where calculus starts. And then once you have this idea of limits down, the two things that I mentioned to you that you can do are to find the slope of a curve and to find the area underneath the curve. Those are the two things which we use limits for in order to solve in calculus. And then it turns out, rather surprisingly, that there is a result, a theorem, which relates those two. Kind of surprising. There's no reason that, to think that area and slope would have anything to do with each other, but it turns out they do. And so this result is so fundamental that we call it the fundamental theorem of calculus. So that's where we're going in this course. We'll be spending almost the entire course talking about slope and applications of slope, but towards the end we will talk about uh, area, and uh, this is the uh, a typical Calc 1 course that you would get anywhere in the country, and uh, we're going to be hitting all the essential parts of it, and I uh, hope you enjoy our journey together. Thank you.